Halloween morning. You know, we're in the last days. And I want to make you aware of the fact that demons are being conjured up in droves. Now, there are a couple of things you need to watch out for, especially for you and your kids. You and or your kids. You tell your kids what to do so they're equipped when you're not around. Demons jump into animals, you guys. And they will attack. When they see God's mark on God's people, they will attack. They will attempt with all they have. They will try to bite, scratch, gnarl, do whatever they can do. Now, you have one weapon. That's all you need. And that's your mouth and the name of Jesus in your mouth. All you have to do when a dog attacks you is say, when they're coming, I bind you in the name of Jesus. You will see a major difference. They will change their direction. They will stop themselves. They will look confused. They'll act as if you disappeared. So whatever happens, know it's the power in the name of Jesus and the authority God gave you over workers of wickedness, over spiritual principalities and all kind of mess, over demons. You've got authority. Another thing, a good prayer to pray during this month is I command all evil, all evil, all types of evil, to stay as far away from me as the east is from the west. That's a good one to pray. That keeps demons at bay. That stops them from even jumping off and getting into mischief with you. Stops them from meddling with you in the first place. Now, whether you believe it or not, you have to at least say it. Because I'm telling you, those words work. Now, you know how the Bible says that the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Well, even demons, the Bible says, the devils believe and tremble. Yes, they do. So trust me when I say they are more afraid of you than you are of them. Rebuke them. Cast them out in the name of Jesus and command them never to return or forbid them to ever try to return. However you want to word it, make sure you finish it. Your period at the end of every command is in the name of Jesus. Remember that. Another thing, be very, very careful what kind of entertainment you watch now. Be very careful what kind of toys you get. Don't get those Dungeons and Dragons. Don't meddle with, with tarot cards. Don't call psychic hotlines. Don't do any of that. Please don't. See, there's coming a time of gross darkness. And when that gross darkness comes, you want to have the power readily and available for you to overturn their works. But if you're toying with them, if you are what I call playing with the devil's toys, toying with his source of entertainment, as my pastor used to say, warming yourself by the devil's fire. What you end up doing is leaving a crack in the door. Now I had an interview with a former witch and she said, when you crack that door with the littlest of things, the Bible says it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. When you use the little things, the insignificant things that you're not worried about, that you don't put much value on, you end up cracking the door when you're playing with the devil's toys. And the devil knows it. And he knows how to summon his demons. Come, come, 
I have an assignment for you. And he will have those bad boys on you, messing with your sleep, giving you sleep paralysis, attacking you in your health, attacking you in your mind, your emotions, whoo, your temperament. He will meddle with you coming and going, jerking you around, playing with you like your little puppet on a string. You're his little rag doll. He can make you come, he can make you go. And you dance to his tune. Why? Because you are totally unaware that you have opened the door and given him control. You have allowed. It's like in opening your door, putting a plate of food at the, at the floor entranceway and just standing there waiting for the roaches to come. And they will. But you can't complain once they get in because you put everything there to make it comfortable for them to be there. When you don't raise up a standard against evil, when you don't obey God and disobey the works of darkness, when you don't resist the devil to make him flee, you might as well just open the door. Because that's what you're doing. The Bible says he's like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, which means you or I will give him permission inadvertently, whether you mean to or not. That's why you have to watch. You have to watch what games your children play, what they come home with. If a relative buys them tarot cards, if a relative buys them crystals, if a relative buys a relative buys them new age things to do little incantations and cast little spells and all that little harmful white magic you think is fun. No, you're still dabbling with the dark side. God calls all witchcraft an abomination because what you're doing is you're drawing from the power of darkness rather than drawing from the power of God. God will not commingle his power with evil. He will not commingle with the workers of darkness. He will not commingle and cohabit in your temple with demons. It's one or the other. That's why the Bible says, choose you this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. So you have to have a made up mind. You cannot straddle the fence. The Bible also says a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. You start doing all that, next thing you know, you're consulting with psychics and mediums. And I've heard of people talking to the dead, having seances in their house and, and, and having Christian stuff around, thinking that, well, the seance is just for my dead loved one. No, ain't no dead loved one saying diddly squat to you. These are familiar spirits imitating your loved one looking like, sounding like, walking like, acting like your loved one. And your loved one is not talking to you because the Bible says for us not to consult with the dead. Even the angels, when Mary and the other guys came looking for the body of Jesus, what did they ask them? Why seek ye the living among the dead? And all they were doing was coming to anoint Jesus' body for burial. But that was the challenge. Why seek ye the living among the dead? You leave all this nonsense alone. You don't need it. Sure, it's entertaining. Sure, it's fascinating. Movies like Harry Potter. You have a whole lot of demonic movies coming out toward the end of this month. They're just going to be coming out in droves because the media likes it like that. 
So you have to know whose side you're on. You have to know what stand. You know, uh, there's an old expression. It's not in the Bible. It's an old expression. It's a street expression. And it says, if you don't stand for something, you will fall for everything. And Satan will have you falling for all his little tricks. Number one, if you don't read God's word, you don't know what kind of tricks Satan can pull on you. So when it's happening, you don't recognize it. Here's an example. My father used to sit me down and talk to me about all the crazy stuff they do at parties. How not to drink the punch. How not to allow a man to have me my drink. Go get my own drink. Don't allow kids to roll up a homemade cigarette. He didn't call it a joint. I knew what it was once I got older. But the bottom line is, he warned me. So when I started seeing it, and people starting to hand me drinks, I'm like, no, that's all right. Because I knew if I wanted to sip a little beer, if I wanted to taste a little alcohol, my father would monitor me and say, okay, I'll allow you, but don't do it elsewhere. And he warned me why. He said, because if you go to these parties, they can slip stuff in your drinks and it'll knock you out. Does that sound familiar now? That man was telling me that stuff back in the 70s. And so he was a man of the world. He knew the games people played, the tricks, the dangers. And he warned me a lot. So there were a lot of things I didn't indulge in because I already knew the dangers. Some of you don't know the dangers in the spirit realm because you're not listening to your father warn you right there in the Bible. You won't read what he's got to say to you. Like Proverbs chapter 7. That's an excellent warning talking about how he looked out his window and he saw a young, a young man, a youth, simple, dumb, caught up in, in the night. And he goes by her corner talking about the strange woman. What's the strange woman? The strange woman is all the enticements that creep out in the night that pull on your flesh to get you caught up in dangerous <clears throat> sexual encounters, dangerous sins, dangerous activity, things that will do nothing but harm you. And he's walking around like, doo -doo 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 -doo. we're going to have a party. And he doesn't know that the whole thing is laid out for his life. Many of you don't know it. You want to play with this. You want to play with that. You want to dabble in levitation. You want to dabble in incantations. You want to cast spells. You want to play with little witchcraft things and little dolls and little trinkets and little crystals and little. Oh, you have no idea. I had I had to spend days delivering a woman from demons. Because she dabbled in crystals, ignorantly. Didn't even know it was sinful. She's so glad to have her mind back, to know her name. Some of y'all will end up not being able to recognize your own name if you see it in neon lights. A spirit of confusion can come on you. You be blabbering like an idiot can't even rub two words together to make a sentence. But you want to keep playing with stuff. You forget that demons transfer from people to people. If you don't know about spiritual armor, how can you protect yourself? If you don't know the authority you have in Jesus Christ, how can you keep evil at bay? Think about it. This is not the season to be jolly, y'all. This is the season to watch and pray. 
driving out the enemy, not inviting him in to set a spell. And that's my warning to you. Get in your word, get in prayer, watch and pray. Get around godly people. Godly people that won't pat you on the back and tell you, oh, ain't no harm in that. you just having a little fun. Don't be getting around people who ain't living nothing so you can hear what you want to hear. That's the last thing you should ever do. Okay, now that Mama Sita has gotten through with her tongue lashing, I want you to know I love you. That's why I was doing it. God bless you. Enjoy this month in God's presence, please. God's way, please. Toodles.